Welcome back to the band guide where we use GarageBand to create professional sounding music. I'm your band guy, Colin, and today is the final video in the Ultimate GarageBand Beginner's Guide series. In this series, we've walked through everything from the first time you open up GarageBand all the way through the recording process, all the way through the mixing process, all the way through the mastering process. So literally everything from the first time you open up GarageBand until you're exporting out your finished mix and mastered song. And today's video is going to be a little bit different because today I want to talk to you about what's next. What are you supposed to do now and give you a bit of a roadmap, a roadmap that I wish I had because when I finished kind of learning the basics of music production, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to improve and I got really discouraged for a while. And so that's what I want to talk to you about. I want to go over kind of three things that have, I've learned over time that have really helped me. And if you follow this, you're going to get better. Your song recordings and mixes and arrangements and masters, they're going to improve if you just follow this very simple approach. So the first thing that I want to share is the idea that your first song is not going to be your best song. And it shouldn't be. It would actually be super disappointing if it was. If you finished your first song and you were like, this is the best thing I'm ever going to do, why keep doing stuff, <laughs> right? So the fact that your first song is not going to be your best song yet might be discouraging for one second in that moment, but it shouldn't be because the reality is that every time you do a song, it's going to get better and you're going to continue to stair step up. But what that first song is, is your best song yet. So whether it's your true first song or just your first song after learning this process, hopefully you're really excited about it. Hopefully you're jazzed and hopefully you realize this is the best thing I've done yet. That is the mindset that I want you to be taking as you're thinking about it. Which leads me to the second thing, which is how we think about ourselves and our music production. This is where I really got thrown off for a while because I start, got into music production, started to learn it, started to get pretty decent at it, and I started to be in experiences where I was working around other engineers and I realized that I wasn't as good as some of them. <laughs> or I'd look up at pro engineers who I was learning from sometimes and I would realize I'm not as good as you. And over time that wore me down as opposed to thinking I'm not as good as you yet. So what I started to realize over time is that I had to shift my mindset from comparing myself to the people who had 10 times the experience I had. They'd been mixing for 20, 30 years compared to my two or three years or one year, right? Or if you just finished your first mix, one day, one week, right? You shouldn't compare yourself to people who have so much more experience to you. What you want to compare yourself to is how far you've come. Look up for inspiration, look around and down for comparison. You don't want to look up for comparison. You want to learn from people above you. You want to be inspired and compare yourself to where you're coming from. So compared to the first thing you ever recorded, how much better is the thing you just finished? How much better have you improved it from the start of that mix? How much better, you know, are, can you compare to where you were a week ago, a month ago, a year ago, right? That growth is the only thing that you should ever compare to. Then you should look up for inspiration and for learning and for knowledge, right? Okay, so that's great. But then, you know, that's kind of where I sat for a while. But then it's like, how do I improve from there? How do I not just get fine with just being okay and being happy enough that I'm just fine, right? That's where the 1% rule comes into play. This is the idea that if you just focus on 1% better across the board, you can do amazing, amazing things, but none of it looks like much. So if you followed along in the series, you notice kind of this 1% rule in action in the mixing process. None of the individual things I did were particularly impressive, but when you add it all up, you get a huge huge improvement over the sound. It goes from kind of demo quality sounding to more professional final production quality. And the only difference is little 1% changes. There's no huge thing that I did along that process. I just did little 1% improvement. So if the next song you work on, you focus on, can I just get this guitar tune 1% better to what I'm hearing in my head? Which by the way, all this is just what you're hearing in your head, what you think sounds good. It's all preferences. I might hate a guitar tone that you love and vice versa. You could hate a tone that I love, right? You might've heard the mix I just finished and thought that sounds terrible, but that's all your preference. I was happy with what I did, right? Preferences are a big part of mixing. Anyway, 1% better on this guitar tone. So I just like it 1% better. Can I get my vocal EQ 1% better? Can I get this compression on my master track 1% better? Can I get my volume balance 1% better? And all those little 1% better improvements, guess what? They add up to like way more than just 1% improvements. They add up to this big aggregate of a huge improvement. And then as you continue to get better, if you get 1% better, but you're 100 times better than you were when you started, that's a bigger improvement each time. So don't worry and don't be overwhelmed by this idea of I have to get so much better. I have so much I need to do. If I ever want to be like that pro engineer, I got to get so much better and understand this. Take all that out and just focus on, well, what's my guitar tone like? 
you know, how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? It's the same thing here. So if you can get 1% better across the board, your mixes and your songs are going to improve tremendously. Now, when it comes to how to actually get 1% better, there's only two things that you should be focusing on. And these are the only two things. Don't get distracted here. This is where shiny object syndrome can come in and try to convince you that you should do a billion other things, but those are just gonna keep you at the same level you are. That's something I struggled with for a long time. So the two things you should do to improve at 1% better along the way is is first, practice. You have to finish more songs. So finish that song that you've been working on, get it all the way done, master it, get it out into this world, send it to your family, send it to your friends, post it on social media, get it out there. There's great Facebook groups just for GarageBand users, by the way, so check those out if you're not already in them. Okay, so getting that 1% better, focusing on just experience is gonna be a huge part of it. Making sure you finish more and more songs. Every song you do, when you finish this song, you start from where you finished on it. So now you're up here starting, and then you're starting, and then you're starting at a higher and higher level, you're just gonna stair step up in improvement. So finishing what you're doing is really, really important. I kind of can't overstate this. There's something about actually reaching the point that it's done that is a lot different than just working on it. When you're working on it, you're not necessarily worried about getting it to a place that you're done and happy with it. You're just kind of, I don't know, fiddling around. But when you are actually completing it, that's how you actually improve. You have to finish with that decision as opposed to just, well, I didn't get that compression where I wanted it, but it's fine because it's just in GarageBand anyway. When you're gonna put it out, you're gonna think a little bit more differently about it and you're gonna be a little bit more serious about making sure you get it set how you want it to. And so actually finishing is important. So every song, is gonna help you stair step up. It's gonna get you that 1%. The second way that you can continue to improve is to continue to learn, but not just learn anything, not be distracted by a bunch of cool little weird tricks. I have taught you the fundamentals in this series. This is where you start. If your mixes don't sound at all like you want them to, some shiny object over here that promises it's gonna make it sound better is not gonna make it sound better. Super complex tools or super complex things like sidechain compression and all these things that are real weird and sound exciting and people are gonna is like the end all be all, they are not what's going to actually improve your mix. What's going to improve your mix is improving the fundamentals. 80 to 90% is just these fundamentals. Those shiny objects might be able to give you one or 2% improvement and that's cool. And that's, you know, as you get better, you can understand where you're gonna work that in. But ultimately, if you wanna improve, you focus on learning these fundamentals better. So getting a better volume balance, getting a better EQ setting, getting a better compression, just understanding EQ better, understanding compression better. And if you understand these tools better, so leveling up your knowledge just 1% at a time, that's also going to continue to improve you 1% at a time. So next time you get a mix, if you just understand compression 1% better, you're probably going to use compression at least 1% better, right? So that combination of knowledge and experience is where you're going to improve 1% at a time. Now I'm going to keep doing YouTube videos, so definitely subscribe to the channel, come back here. I also have full courses going in depth on these things at thebandguide.com. You can check those out as well, but don't lose sight of what's really, really important here, which is just the fundamentals, learning and practicing them. That's how you're going to improve. Okay, so just to quickly summarize, your first song is not gonna be your best song and that's good. The second is that you should compare yourself to where you've come from and not those above you. Look up for inspiration, down for comparison. And third and final is just 1% better and to get there, you're just gonna focus on knowledge and experience, practice, right? Okay, I hope this was helpful for you. If you don't already have it, be sure to grab the Ultimate GarageBand Guide from the link in the description below. It's really gonna help you out. It has recording, mixing, mastering, all those tips in it. it. This is a piece of that knowledge. So definitely grab it. It's completely free from the link in the description below. As always, I'd like to hear from you. Was this video helpful? I know this video is a little bit different than what I typically do, but if it's helpful, I'll keep doing videos like this. Let me know in the comments below. If this video was helpful, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you tomorrow because it's on a Thursday, and Thursday is when I typically put out videos with another video. One